Hi everyone, I am Jing Han, a PhD student from UIUC and Assistance Platform Research Group. In this talk, I will be very happy to share with you how we build LiFTL, which is a learning-based flash translation layer for solid-state drives. As we know that flash-based SSDs have been improved significantly over the past decades, especially for its increased capacity and performance. For example, its PCIe bandwidth, the embedded processors, and the flash chips have all been improved. However, SSD DRAM buffer is still the major bottleneck for its high cost and limited capacity. SSD maintains a large address mapping table on its DRAM. The mapping table maps from the logical flash page address to the physical flash page address. If we increase the SSD capacity, the memory footprint of this mapping table will also increase. However, its DRAM capacity is less scalable. If we can reduce the mapping table size, this not only can help us reduce the SSD manufacturing cost, but also benefit the storage performance from a larger data cache. There exist many human-driven approaches to solve this problem. For example, block-level FTL maintains the mapping table at the flash block level. However, this can incur high garbage collection overhead by merging multiple flash blocks to align the page offset within the flash block. DFTL caches part of the mapping table entries in the DRAM but it may incur extra I.O. traffic due to cache misses. SFTL performs compression on sequential mapping table entries. But all these human heuristic-based approaches cannot capture diverse and dynamic mapping patterns. In this work, we use a learning-based approach to reduce the mapping table size. With a simple yet effective linear regression-based approach, we can compress multiple mapping table entries into a single learn index segment. The learn index segment can be parameterized into four parameters, including the start LPA address, the length, the slope, and the intercept. And by doing so, we can reduce the memory consumption. The reason why we can obtain such a good mapping table patterns are the following. First, the storage workload typically demonstrates good spatial locality. And second, there exists a write buffer inside SSD, which groups multiple flash pages together before they are flushed to the backend flash media. And that help us to identify better mapping table patterns. Based on our study, we can reduce the memory footprint by 20.9 times on average, and the safe new memory can also benefit the data cache size, which improved the storage performance by 1.4 times. We are using a linear regression approach with a guaranteed error bound, which means that this can incur mispredictions in address translation. If we increase this guaranteed error bound, this can help us to capture even more patterns by grouping more mapping table entries into a single learn index segment. A larger error bound not only helps us to reduce the number of segments inside the mapping table, but also help us to save more memory. So far, we show the significant benefit from the learning-based approach. However, this is not a free lunch, as it comes with several challenges. First of all, we have to minimize the learning overhead of the mapping table during updates. Second, we have to gracefully handle mispredictions in the address translation. And third, we have to preserve other core FTL functionalities, such as garbage collection and flash allocation. We present LiFTL, which is a learning-based flash translation layer for SSDs, which addresses the above-mentioned challenges. To minimize the relearning overheads, it manages the learn index segments in a log structure manner. Moreover, LiFTL gracefully handles mispredictions using the out-of-band metadata. The FTL also preserves core FTL functionalities with optimized flash allocation and coordinated garbage collection. First, I'll discuss how the FTL designs a log structure mapping table. As you can see here, the learn address mapping table consists of multiple learn index segments. And as the storage workloads are handled by the SSD, there could be a lot of write requests. As SSD performs auto place update, we have to frequently update the corresponding mapping table entries because we have to update the physical address for the logical address, which incurs relearning of the existing index segments. This not only brings extra CPU cycles, additional flash accesses, but also it breaks existing learn index patterns, and which incurs additional memory footprint. Therefore, we use a log structure mapping table to avoid the relearning of the existing segments. We design this log structure address ma mapping table based on several principles. The mapping table is organized into multiple levels, with the upper level containing the new index segments and the lower levels containing the old index segments. At each level, we guarantee that 
the segments are having non-overlapping LPA ranges, and they are sorted by their logical address. Across different levels, we allow overlapping index segments. Now I'll give you some examples of the operations. First, to handle write requests, the piecewise linear regression will translate the mapping to entries into learned index segments, and the newer segments will be appended to the topmost level. If the new segment conflict with the existing segment, which means that if they have overlapping LPA ranges, the older segments will be popped to the next level. As the mapping table grows, there could be multiple levels in the mapping table, and you have to perform a flash address translation, the search will be start from the topmost level, and until we find the correct index segment that index this logical address. As the mapping table grows, there could be redundant index entries. So we have to perform a periodical compaction of the mapping table. As you can see here in this example, before compaction, there exist six index segments. But after removing those redundant entries, we only result in three remaining index segments, which help us to save more memory. So far, I talk about how we use a log structure approach to minimize the relearning overhead of the mapping table. Next, I will talk about how we gracefully handle mispredictions in address translation. On the SSD, each flash page are attached with out-of-band metadata area, which contains the logical address of this physical flash page. During the address translation, the learning mapping table will translate and predict the corresponding physical address of the logical address and load the predicted flash page to its DRAM buffer. By comparing the logical address stored in the OOB metadata with the requested LPA, we can verify the correctness of this address translation. However, if a misprediction happens, we have to search through its neighbor flash pages until we find the correct one. This is time consuming as it incurs multiple extra flash read requests. To solve this problem, instead of storing the logical address of the flash page itself, we store the accurate reverse mapping of two gamma plus one neighbor flash pages, where gamma is the error bound of our learned algorithm. Therefore, by incurring only one extra flash read penalty, we can directly obtain an accurate flash page. This reduces the misprediction penalty from log gamma flash page reads to only one flash page read. And finally, I'm going to talk about how we preserve core FTL functionalities with optimized flash allocation and coordinated GC. As we have discussed before, SSD maintains a write buffer and it groups multiple flash pages together before it is flushed to the empty flash blocks. However, directly flushing the flash pages from the right buffer is less optimal to the learned mapping table. This is because, as you can see here in this example, those sequential mapping table entries could be divided into different learned index segments. Here, the pages 76 and 77, even though they could demonstrate sequential mapping table patterns, but they are learned into different learned index segments. Therefore, we perform a simple but effective optimization. Before flushing these flash pages, we will sort the flash pages by their logical page address. This, this creates a monotonic address mapping patterns and help us reduce the learned index segments being created. Moreover, we perform coordinated garbage, garbage collection in our LiFTL. We do not modify the existing garbage collector, but for the valid pages we copied from the erased flash block, we'll write, we'll write them at the right buffer, and after their physical addresses is allocated, we will learn new index segments, and they will be appended to the topmost level of the address mapping table. This is kind of similar to how we handle incoming updates to the, uh, based on the write requests. By doing so, we learn new index segments to avoid messing up the existing segment during garbage collection. To put it all together, the FTL consists of multiple components, including the optimized block allocation, the learned mapping table, and the OB verification mechanism. To handle write requests, the optimized flash block allocation will sort the flash pages by the LPA and update the mapping table entries to the learned mapping table. Then the flash pages will be flashed to their corresponding flash blocks. During address translation, the learned mapping table will predict the corresponding physical page for the logical address. And the predicted flash page will be loaded to the Duran buffer, and it will perform our verification mechanism. If a misprediction happens, we can correct the misprediction with minimized flash penalty. Now I will move on to the implementation and evaluation. 
We implemented LiFTL with a validated simulator and a real programmable SSD platform, which has a one terabyte open channel SSD with 16 channels. We evaluated LiFTL with multiple RA workloads from block IO traces of the enterprise and university servers to data intensive applications such as Filebench and Benchbase. In our experiment setup, we compare LiFTL with multiple baseline FTL schemes, including the DFTL, which caches part of the mapping table, and SFTL, which compresses only sequential logical to physical mapping table entries. We also evaluated DFTL with different error bounds for sensitivity analysis. First, we show that DFTL can capture more mapping table patterns, and therefore, it can further reduce the mapping table size. With the safe memory for a larger data cache, we can benefit the storage performance. Based on our study, LiFTL achieves 2.9 times additional memory savings and 1.4 times reduced storage access latency on average. Also, we show the low misprediction ratio of LiFTL. With the error bound gamma equals to 16, the misprediction ratio is less than 10% on average. We also perform sensitivity analysis on the error tolerance. By increasing the error bound, it only, not only brings extra memory footprint reduction, but also increase the storage performance by 1.3 times. As a conclusion, LiFTL uses a simple but effective learning-based technique to reduce the memory consumption. It stores the learned segments in a log structure manner to avoid the relearning. It uses the out-of-band metadata to help verify and correct its address translation. It consumes 2.9 times less memory and improves the storage performance by 1.4 times. We open source LiFTL on GitHub, and feel free to try it out. Thank you so much for listening. I'm ready to take any questions.